Greetings to you believers, greetings to followers, and greetings to our fans. We know also that we do have fans, which is not really something worth celebrating, because the gospel was never provided to entertain men, but to save mankind. So when you find a fan, a fan, it means someone is finding entertainment in what this other person is doing. You can't be a fan of Jesus Christ. You need to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. You need to be saved. You need to be born again. You need to be uh, found in Christ for your own salvation. But we know it's a process that depends on the will of God and also on God's time. Some of the people who are fans today are going to be believers tomorrow. We greet you. We hope you are going to find this program worthwhile. We hope you are going to find this program educative and beneficial to your understanding of the gospel of Christ. Uh, Pastor, the moment of laughter should never be misunderstood. We are doing the moment of laughter to preach the gospel by exposing heresy, exposing practices that are heretic and ungodly for the benefit of the people of God. So, the moment of laughter is not a comedy show that Apostle Chuenga invented to make you laugh. The moment of laughter is there to educate you on why certain doctrines and practices of doctrines are heretic and ungodly. So, we do so by showing you what those practices and doctrines are doing and how they are doing it, and we correct them, the laughter aspect and the laughter component in this engagement is just there to make you feel comfortable. We don't want you to get angry while you are learning the word. We are using a given <coughs> gift, the humor that you have in you. We want to use it for some very important purpose. Instead of just laughing at useless vain jokes, you are going to be laughing at heresy, which deserves to be mocked and to be uh, discredited. So Pastor Baloy, we haven't done the moment of laughter in a long time. Yes, yes, uh, we thank God, Apostle, uh, as we all know that uh, even during the days of our Lord Jesus Christ, when he was in this world, uh, often, most of the time, uh, a, a large crowd was around him, but he had his disciples there, and uh, he would address the Pharisees, the, the Sadducees, the lawyers, the scribes, but for the benefit of his own disciples. So we really thank God, uh, Apostle, indeed it's a moment of laughter. Uh, we have to laugh at heresy, and uh, as it is exposed, we learn, uh, but in, on a lighter moment or in lighter moments. So we, we thank God for that. And I hope all that are following, you are going to be enriched um, in this moment of laughter of today. Yes. Um... I would want to, um, I would like to read Leviticus chapter 19, verse 14 and 15. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 14 and 15. What yes. does it say, Pastor? Thou shalt not curse the deaf, nor put a stumbling block before the blind. But thou shalt fear thy God, I am the Lord. 
you do should. not yes do not kiss the deaf yes because you are saying they can't hear what i'm saying mm -hmm. so you start to mock you start to ridicule to castigate to look down upon mm -hmm. to embarrass and to speak evil against somebody who is deaf you are justifying yourself because you say, after all, you won't hear what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. You shall not curse the deaf, nor put a stumbling block before the blind, but shall to fear thy God. I am the Lord. So, what God is saying in this scripture is that God does not want you or anyone else or myself to take advantage on people who have natural disadvantages or natural limitations. A blind man cannot see. He needs the community of those who see to help him walk to where he wants to go. But when you put a stumbling block before the blind, you are actually making his situation worse. Mm -hmm. You are taking advantage of it because he is not going to be able to see you, that it is you who has done that. So this is not allowed by God. But then you need to understand now that blindness is in two dimensions. Mm -hmm. We have spiritually blindness, blind people and we have physically blind people. We have spiritual blindness and physical or natural blindness. So this scripture is not limited to physical blindness. I hope you are going to understand this. So I want to talk about spiritual blindness. Let us read Matthew chapter 13, verse number 10. And the disciples came and said unto him, Yes. Why speakest thou unto them in parables? Yes. He answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. Yes. For whosoever hath to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. But whosoever hath not from him shall be taken away, even that he hath. Yes. Therefore speak I to them in parables. Why? Because they see, they seeing, see not, and hearing they hear not. Yes. Neither, neither do they understand. Understanding. Yes. Understanding the things of God mm -hmm. is a spiritual eyesight. Mm -hmm. So when you find the Lord talking about blindness, he is not limiting this matter to just a matter of probably blindness where you can't see prophecies and you say, I have not been able to prophesy I'm blind. No. Or blindness that is physical, where we have people with the physical challenges relating and emanating from their inability to see. He is talking about a spiritual blindness where you can't understand the things of God. Spirituality is a mystery that you have no clue about. You are spiritually blind. You may hear the word, you may read the scriptures, but you never understand. So someone who does not have understanding of the gospel is spiritually blind. Verse 14 and 15. Thou shalt not curse. No, we are still reading Matthew 13, Pastor. And in them is fulfilled. And the in them prophecy. is fulfilled the prophets of Esaias. Yes. Which said, By hearing you shall hear. Yes. And shall not understand. Yes. And seeing you shall see. Yes. And shall not perceive. Yes. For this people's heart is waxed gross. Waxed gross. And their ears are dull of hearing. Why? And their eyes have. have their eyes they have closed. Why? Lest at any time they should see with their eyes. Yes. And hear with their ears. What happens if they see? 
and should understand with when their they heart. When they see, they will understand with their heart. And should be converted. They should be converted. And I should heal them. And I should save them. Yes. So when you see properly, mm -hmm. you will understand. Yes. And you will be converted. And Jesus will save you. So when you hear the, the scripture now in Leviticus 19 saying, do not put a stumbling block mm -hmm. along the way of a blind man. Yes. He's not really talking to those who are trying to put stumbling blocks on the path of the physically blind. No. He's addressing the spiritually blind, which means the catchment area of Leviticus 19 verse 14 becomes broader. Otherwise, if we narrowed it to the aspect of physical disability in blindness, we would find probably one in 100,000 people who is blind. And we say, well, be careful when you meet such a blind man, lest God will have a matter with you because you have violated Leviticus 19 verse 14. But now that you understand that blindness addresses those who are unable to understand that they may repent and Jesus should heal them in that sense, save them. So we, we are now surrounded with a world of blind people. Yes. Once we understand that this is about spiritual blindness, it means the world is made up of particularly, majorly blind people. Those who see are much lesser than those who are blind. Mm -hmm. But when you look at physical blindness, mm -hmm. those who see are many than those who are blind. Yes. But when it comes to spiritual blindness, those who are blind are many than those who see. Yes. So, if we now understand this, who are they that the scripture is saying, do not put a stumbling block upon those who are blind. So in Matthew 15, the Lord was contending with the Pharisees because they were not happy or about the idea of apostles, the disciples of Jesus, eating food without washing their hands first. We won't need the whole passage. I gave you this summary. We just want to look at verse number 12. After Jesus answers them on this matter, what did the apostles say to Jesus? Then came his disciples and said unto him, The disciples came to Jesus and spoke to him, Knowest thou that the Pharisees were offended after they heard this saying? Are you aware that the Pharisees are angry at what you have just said? Okay, can you imagine, Pastor, <laughs> that uh, the apostles are reporting to God yes. that people are angry at what God has said? Yes. They did not understand mm. the men that they were calling Jesus, mm. that he was God, the creator of the universe. Who should not mind whether people are angry or not? <laughs> what can people do to their creator if they decide to be angry at him? But yeah. at this point, of course, it wasn't clear that our Lord was God because he was habiting in a, a, an earthly vessel, his physical body. But of course, Pastor, we are going to find people coming to us with the same report after doing the moment of laughter, they are going to say, do you know so and so. that is this man and that man and that woman and this woman, they are offended mm. after they heard you doing the moment of laughter. <laughs> Apostle, are you aware that you are offending people with your teachings? Mm -hmm. Well, it's not the first time, my dear. We will come to the church. Jesus also used it to offend mm -hmm. when he taught his message. It's not new. If it is new to you, it means you have stayed in heresy for too long. Let's find out if Jesus apologized after he was told the Pharisees were offended when they heard him speaking. Yes. But he answered and said, Every plant which my heavenly Father has not planted yes. shall be rooted up. Everyone who is doing what he is not commissioned to do, God will destroy him. Verse 14. Let them alone. Leave the Pharisees alone. They be blind leaders of the blind. They are blind leaders of the blind. 
And if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. We now have two problems, Pastor. <laughs> yes. We have a problem of people mm-hmm. putting stumbling blocks mm-hmm. on the path of the blind. Yes. In Leviticus 19.14. Yes. But we also have a problem in Matthew 15.14 mm-hmm. of having blind people mm-hmm. being led by the blind. Yes. According to our Lord, they will both fall into the ditch. Yes. Let's highlight the word ditch, believer, and our followers. If you don't know what the Lord meant when he said ditch there, he was talking about the lake of fire, eternal destruction. He was talking about hell. The word ditch there Mm -hmm. is talking about hell and the lake of fire. Saka Imosha Kututi Uribof Otera Bof Imosha Nuti Manure was Shakaita Shakan the Mesem Chawira Mgorong Apana Titi Manj Kurevaku Ganauri Bof Ono fanyi wako wana uchenji wako ziva kuti Nika tevele sei munu, njiri bofu kudai mm. Pati ndi singa tevele Nika kafuna nini Nika to tevele wano ona Nika ita mistake ya kuti njiri bofu kudai yes. Ndo tevele rime bofu mm. Mistake yu echa ndisa mzivaro moto yes. Kune vanu vacha pindi na mzivaro moto mm. Mosha ya kuti makanga muri bofu tano Makangu ita mistake wano Maka tevele rime bofu Ona ya mawira mese Mohades. Yeah. Kwe bofa isi mosha. Asiku zote era wabofi uri bofu. I mosha ufungi. <laughs> the scriptures are rebuking those who see that they should not put a stumbling block mm-hmm. on the road along the way, the path of the blind. Yes. But the scriptures are not sympathizing with the blind man mm-hmm. who chooses to follow another blind man. These are two issues which, is, which, which are going to help us to look at the moment of laughter in, in the right perspective. Why do you do moment of laughter, Apostle Shwenga? Why do you expose those who are preaching with errors in their messages? The answer is, number one, God does not want a blind man to follow another blind man. Which means if you are not blind, whenever you see a blind man following another blind man, Mm -hmm. it's a job to warn the blind man. Don't follow this one. Mm -hmm. He's as blind as you are. Mm -hmm. He can't lead you to the path of of righteousness. Yes. So if you are walking now behind another blind man whom you have chosen to lead you, it means you don't know the road you are depending on another blind man mm-hmm. to take you to the right destination. Yes. What is the destination? Eternal life. How do we go to heaven? Jesus is the way. John mm-hmm. chapter 14, verse 6. So if Jesus is the way, anyone who needs to be followed mm-hmm. for people to go to heaven, mm-hmm. he must be able to see the way yes. that goes to heaven. Mm-hmm. If you find a preacher who doesn't preach Jesus, who is the way to heaven, Mm -hmm. then you have found a blind man. Don't follow that blind man because you are going to end up in a ditch. This blind man will not know the right way that goes to heaven. Yes. This road you are following is not going to heaven. It's going to hell, Pastor. It's a ditch. It's a dead end. This road is a dead end. Mm. Unfortunately, at the deadness of the end, there is a ditch. Yes. So those who see must scream and cry the loudest. Mr. Blind Man, stop following that one. He's as blind as you are. Very soon you'll be falling into a ditch. Come here. We have someone who sees the road Mm. that leads to eternal life. Yes. So... We were looking at Matthew 15 to prove that blindness is not a blindness that only addresses eyesight in the physical body. Let us look. So, as you can see, Pastor, 
in Matthew chapter 15, there was no one blind in this matter. Mm -hmm. According to verse number 12, the apostles reported to the Lord, Lord, do you know that the Pharisees were offended mm -hmm. when they heard your teaching? Mm -hmm. And Jesus, in verse 14, addresses the Pharisees who were not physically blind. Mm -hmm. And he said, the Pharisees are blind leaders mm -hmm. of the blind. Mm -hmm. Which means already in Matthew chapter 15, we have a church which is made up of blind leaders mm -hmm. and blind followers, mm -hmm. which is Judaism. The Pharisees belonged to Judaism, mm -hmm. which means when we look at the synagogue, we must know the synagogue is a center for the blind. Yes. Because the Pharisees were leaders in the synagogue, which was a separate religion from the Church of Israel. Mm -hmm. The leaders of the Church of Israel were the priesthood of Aaron. The Pharisees did not have a part to play in the Holy Temple. The priesthood never worked in the synagogue. The priesthood's place of work, the place of worship, was not the synagogue. It yes. was the temple. Yes. So whenever you enter into the synagogue, from now onwards, you must yes. know yes. no one has right eyesight in the synagogue. It's a place of the blind. Yes. The leaders, the Pharisees are blind. Mm -hmm. The followers, the, those who are in Judaism, they mm -hmm. are also blind. Mm -hmm. Who said this? Jesus, <laughs> in Matthew chapter 15, yes. verse 12 to 14. Mm -hmm. Pharisees are blind. Now, for those who say, but could we really depend on one scripture, I would want to read verse 16 and 17 of Matthew 23. Woe unto you, you blind guides. He was talking about Pharisees. Let's start from verse 15 so that we may give them perspective. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees. Scribes and Pharisees are hypocrites. For you, you can pass see and learn to make one proselyte. You make one convert. And when he is made, yes, you make him twofold more the child of hell than yourselves. 16. Woe unto you, ye blind guides. Who is described as blind guides here, Pastor? The Pharisees. Scribes and Pharisees. Yes. Woe unto you, Pharisees and scribes, you are blind guides. Yes. Yes. Woe unto you, ye blind guides, which say, Whosoever shall swear by the temple, it is nothing. But whosoever shall swear by the gold of the temple, so he is a data. this afternoon, Pastor, it's the second time. Yes. It's the second time Jesus is describing a pastor mm -hmm. as a blind leader. Mm -hmm. I like the phrase blind guides. Mm -hmm. The word guides there, it simply means leaders. Mm -hmm. The Pharisees were preachers. Yes. Like the Mahajas and the Gutis and the Makandiwas. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, they had no spiritual eyesight. Mm -hmm. So they were leading, but they didn't have eyesight. So they are blind leaders. Verse 17. Ye fools and blind. Yes. For where there is greater the what gold. What is greater, the gold or, or the, the temple? temple that sanctifies the gold. Thank you, Pastor. Mm. So, Pastor, can you see that even the word fool is there in Jesus' vocabulary? Yes. The present day fragile weaklings we have in Christianity, they panic when they hear the preacher describing another preacher as a fool. Mm -hmm. They say, but you are a preacher. You, must, you are supposed to be full of love. Mm -hmm. You see, Apostle Juenga, you are so bitter at these preachers. If you perhaps show them love, they will listen to you. Mm -hmm. How can a man of God mm -hmm. describe another man of God as a fool? <laughs> Well, I have another question for you. Would you follow Jesus if you hear him describing the Pharisees and the scribes as fools and blind guides? Would you? So, read verse 17 again. Ye fools and blind. Yes. For whether is greater the gold or the temple that sanctified the gold? All right. The last scripture, of course, is Romans 11, Pastor. It's quite a lengthy scripture, but we need to read it all 
so that they may understand the, the perspective. We are still looking at Leviticus 19, verse 14 and 15 mm -hmm. to understand does God really put emphasis on the, on the physically challenged persons among our societies in the area of eyesight? When he says, it's an evil sin for someone to put a stumbling block before the blind. Fear God. He does not tolerate such cruelty. Which blind was God looking at? So those who know in Romans chapter 9 and chapter 10, Apostle Paul was sorrowing and lamenting the stiff-heartedness of Israel and the lack of salvation that has happened to Israel. He desired that God would have saved Israel, but apparently God had not yet saved Israel. The gospel had left Israel to go to the Gentiles, to us, the non-Jewish people, the British, the Americans, the Australians, the Canadians, the Germans, the Europeans, the Africans, the Asians, the Arabs. The gospel left Israel, and Paul the apostle grieved about it. In Romans chapter 10, verse 1, he says, My heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. In Romans chapter 9, verse 1, he said, Brethren, I say the truth in Christ, I lie not. My conscience also bearing witness in the Holy Spirit that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. For I could wish that myself were cased from Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen to the flesh, according to the flesh, who are Israelites. He, was, he had continual sorrow mm -hmm. in his heart because Israel had not yet been saved. Mm -hmm. But in, in, in Romans 11, he seemed to have calmed down a little bit because he now had a more a conciliatory tone towards this Israeli predicament as it were. Let's read from verse 1 to 7 and find out how can we pick blindness from the Israeli predicament. I say then, if God cast away his people... Since Israel has not yet been saved, because in Romans chapter 10, pastor, verse 21, he said, but to but Israel, Israel he says, is saved. Yes. All day long I have stretched forth my hands unto a disobedient and gainsaying people. So in verse 21 of Romans 10, he says, I now know mm -hmm. why Israel has not yet been saved. Yes. They rejected God's call to salvation. They are disobedient and they are gainsayers, yes. the Israelites. Mm -hmm. So in verse 1 of chapter 11, he says, I say then. Yes, I say then, hath God cast away his people. Since Israel has is, is, is gainsayed and rebelled, has God rejected Israel? Yeah. Yes. God forbid. God has not rejected Israel. For I also am an Israelite. Paul himself was an Israelite. Of the seed of Abraham. Of the tribe of Benjamin. Of the tribe of Benjamin. Yes. God, God did not uh, cast away his people which he foreknew. God cannot cast away people that he already knew. What he not what the scripture said of Elias? What did Elijah do? How he maketh intercession to God against Israel. Saying, Elijah at some point prayed to God concerning Israel. Lord, they have killed thy prophets. Israel has killed your prophets. And digged down thy altars. Israel has digged down God's altars. And I am left alone. Elijah was left alone. And they seek my life. They wanted to kill him also. But what said the answer of God unto How him? did God answer back to Elijah? I have reserved to myself 7,000 men. God had preserved to himself 7,000 men. Who have not bowed the knee to the image this of This is power. the doctrine of the remnant, verse 5. Even so, then at this present time also, there is a remnant according to the election Even of though Christ. the whole nation has rebelled and again said against God, but God still preserved a few remnant according to the election of grace. And if by grace, if they were reserved by grace, then is it no more of work? It is not based on their effort. Otherwise, grace is no more grace. Because work nullifies grace. But if it be of works, and if it is of the law, then it is no more grace. Grace nullifies the law. Otherwise, work is no more work. Yes. 
What then? What then? Israel hath not obtained that which he seeketh. The salvation of the soul of the Israelites that Israel was seeking after, they have not obtained it. But the election had obtained it. But the election among Israel obtained salvation. And the rest were blinded. The rest of Israel were blinded. According as it is written. What was written? God hath given them the spirit of slumber. Yes. Eyes that they should not see. Yes. And ears that they should not hear unto this day. Now we will not read Deuteronomy 29 verse 1 to 3. Mm -hmm. Where Apostle Paul picked up this quotation mm -hmm. when he said according as it is written. Mm -hmm. God has given them eyes that do not see. Mm -hmm. and ears that should not hear unto this day. Yes. And so it goes back to what we had read earlier on in Matthew chapter number, um, number 13, 13, Matthew chapter 13, when the Lord quoted the same scripture in Isaiah, but it was also reported earlier on in Deuteronomy 29, verse number 3, and then, this is what I wanted you to see. He was quoting Isaiah chapter 6, verse 9 and 10, when he said, In them is fulfilled the, the prophecy. prophecy of Isaiah, yes. which he says, By yes. hearing you shall hear, mm -hmm. and you shall not understand. Yes. And seeing you shall see, yes. and you shall not perceive. Yes. This is the state of the blind. They don't see, even though they try to say, I want to open my eyes to see. They can't perceive and understand what they are seeing. So in Romans chapter 11, this is not now the work of the devil. According to verse number 8, Apostle Paul was quoting Isaiah 29, verse number 10, and verse number 13, <clears throat> when he says, according as it is written, mm -hmm. God has given them the spirit of slumber. And also Deuteronomy 29 verse 3. But when you look at verse 7, it says the rest mm -hmm. were blinded. Yes. So this blindness, okay, this blindness has been allowed by God to happen. Mm -hmm. I don't know, Pastor, uh, I don't know if our people would understand this. Um, let's finish off with verse 25, Pastor. Romans 11, verse 25. Yes. For I would not, brethren, what? that you should be ignorant of this mystery. I don't want you Gentiles to be ignorant of the mystery. What mystery do you want to talk about? Lest you should be wise in your own conscience. So that Gentiles may start to boast and say, God loves us more than he loves the Jews. That blindness in part is happened to Israel. God has caused Israel to be partly blind. So this partial blindness does not mean they see, they see hazy visions. They are not totally blind. No, the part, the way the part is not describing the intensity of the blindness mm -hmm. is describing the duration of the blindness. Israel is not going to be perpetually blind. Yes. Israel is going to be blind for a specific season. Yes. That's why when he said blindness is partly happened to Israel, he then says until, until the, the fullness, fullness of the Gentiles become in. So when is Israel going to start mm -hmm. to see when Gentiles are saved? Yes. There is a time when God is going to say, I am now satisfied with the salvation of the Gentiles. It's now time for me to open the eyes of the blind Israelites for them to believe in the gospel. Verse 26. And so all Israel shall be saved, as it is written, they shall come out of Zion the deliverer and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. So this is not a sermon. I just wanted to say these things. There are two issues with the blindness. But before we addressed the two issues, 
I wanted to define blindness first. Mm -hmm. So when you look at Romans 11, 25 and 26, mm -hmm. he then says, and so all Israel shall be saved, mm -hmm. which means every sinner needs eyesight for them to be saved. Mm -hmm. Blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles is come in mm -hmm. and then all Israel shall be saved. Yes. So when you are spiritually blind, it means your blindness is a stumbling block to your salvation. Yes. You can't be saved if you are blind. You need eyesight for you to be saved. Yes. What is this blindness about? It's understanding. If you don't understand the scriptures, it means you are blind. Mm -hmm. So Israel is not blind on account of their mischief. From the scriptures read, it is clear God is the one who activated the blindness of Israel so that he could save the Gentiles. And while at least the Gentiles are being saved, the Israelites are still blind. When God is happy with the salvation of the Gentiles, this blindness which has happened for a short term to the Israelites shall be taken off. Now, when we look at Leviticus 19, we see God saying, don't put a stumbling block before the blind. The moment of laughter, ladies and gentlemen, is there to challenge the stumbling block that has been put before the blind so that the blind, the blind may not remain blind because they and their eyesight is a prerequisite for their salvation to be achieved. So heresy is a stumbling block because when you are believing a heretic preacher, he has put a stumbling block to your eyesight. You are not going to find eyesight which is required in your salvation. You are not going to find the way to God. The preacher of heresy makes you to believe that you are already a child of God. It's a stumbling block. When we preach, you say, I don't need to listen to you. I am already a child of God. I am already a believer. I am a Christian. I received Jesus. I chose Jesus to be my Savior 15, 29, 45 years ago. It's a stumbling block. So what we do is we attack the stumbling block to remove it so that you may find your eyesight without which no man shall see God. So there is a law already which authorizes us to challenge every stumbling block. Mm -hmm. Anyone who puts a stumbling block on the path of a blind man has committed a heinous crime against God. Mm -hmm. And those who know God should not leave those people unchallenged. So, Pastor, let's read Deuteronomy 27, verse 18. But, but if he sanctify his field... Deuteronomy 27, verse 18. Okay, sorry, I was in the good case. Cursed be he that makes the blind to wander yes. out of the way, and all the people shall say, Amen. <laughs> now, the problem, Pastor, is all the people are not saying Amen. Some they say. are people who are defending the cursed ones. Mm -hmm. Anyone who causes the blind to wander out of the way mm -hmm. is cursed by God. Yes. Are you not being led astray by a leader who is actually leading you astray because you are blind? Mm -hmm. Pastor, do you know that before we talk about the way, before we talk about understanding, mm -hmm. to say, okay, according to Matthew chapter 13, if you can't understand the gospel, mm -hmm. you are blind. And yet without this understanding, you cannot be saved. Mm -hmm. Because for you to be saved, you need to understand. And when you understand, you will believe. And when you believe, you will be converted. And Jesus, according to Matthew 13, will heal you. That is, he will save you. Before we look at that and say, this brother, this sister does not understand. He is blind. Do you know that, Pastor? 
following a blind leader is a sign that you are blind. Yes. Following a false teacher is a sign that you are blind. Mm -hmm. Because of course, if you know the way to town and somebody says, I will drive you to town. If he starts driving towards Bulawayo, can you remain quiet for the whole 480 kilometers? <laughs> If, if you know that they, and people are calling you, where are you? I'm in Kadoma, I'm almost in town. <laughs> I was in Norton, but I'm gaining mileage. <laughs> I'm sure in two and a half hours' time, I may be in Bulawa. In Harare. In Harare. Yes. That's, that's, that's not, that's not the, the, the way a, a person who is not blind will talk. Yes. If you are not blind, you say to the driver, Mr. Driver, I said I'm going to Harare. Yes. Why are you driving towards Bulawayo? It's a sign that you are not blind. Yeah. But if you are screaming and jumping, Amen! <laughs> Go deeper! <laughs> Professor Ivava! Accelerate. <laughs> Increase the speed, Mr. Driver. <laughs> huh? <laughs> it's a sign you are blind. Yes. Yeah. So, th this is now the problem in our in our Shona traditional uh, uh, communities, we had a problem, Pastor, where women used to kick to prepare concoctions mm -hmm. to confuse their husbands so that they would become less feisty and they would become dull so that the women may start to control their husbands. Mm -hmm. In our Shona language, it's called Mupuira. Mm -hmm. So what happens is, if you have eaten this concoction as a man, mm -hmm. you become a puppet of your wife. Mm -hmm. Your wife controls everything that you do. Yes. And even if your brothers or your parents were to call you and say, your decisions are not in the best interest of your family, mm -hmm. you will still go and say to your wife, did you hear what my parents were saying? <laughs> and you take instructions from your wife. <laughs> the problem with someone who has eaten that concoction is, <laughs> Talking to him usually does not help. <laughs> the adults must find a traditional herbalist mm -hmm. to actually detoxify this one, this lad, mm -hmm. who has eaten Mufuira. Mm -hmm. Counseling him does not work. Yes. He will listen only to his wife. Yes. Ask your name about our Nagafuira. Where? Saka kana mchi dila ni Nagafuira pastor. Yes. Because Edward Yes. Mugamuti to Gugudari, Anna Kumbira and Vumo Gumkazuag, Dan Zindu Dari Mundi Vumize, Sinum Nagadarum Numbatirasi. So following a false preacher mm -hmm. is like Munaga Fuirwa. Yes. Someone has prepared a very, very dangerous concoction which has vexed your mind, telling you that your pastor is an heretic is not enough. Mm -hmm. You need grace for God to touch your heart for your own salvation. Because when we preach, we are trusting that you are in your right mind to listen with, with an objection, an, an objective to learn, an objective to improve your wisdom, your understanding of Jesus Christ and his gospel. But when you have been, when you have eaten an aphrodisiac, a concoction, that, that stimulates a lot of, uh, a, 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 a lot of uh, short-sightedness inside of you. You become a worshiper of a man. You no longer have rationale in your thought processes. Mm -hmm. You no longer f ask questions. You no longer seek for verified cited scriptures to prove what the man of God is saying. Even before the man of God finishes talking, you're already saying amen. You haven't <laughs> heard anything. 
Wakafuirwa. That's why the word of God is described in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, as quick and powerful. Mufuira, mm iwo -hmm. shokoramwa rino gona kuita and do. The word of God is able to, mm -hmm. to, to, to work as an antidote to this voodoo, to this concoction, to this aphrodisiac. Because it can pierce to the dividing asunder of the soul and spirit, mm -hmm. the joints and the marrow. It is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. So God does not want those who are blind to have their way they, they, they are way littered and obstructed with stumbling blocks. A false teaching is a stumbling block in the way of righteousness. Yes. A false message is a stumbling block in the path of the doctrine of Christ. A heretic practice in a church society, a church system, is a stumbling block to yes. those who are blind. That's why they must be removed. They must be uprooted. And this is the purpose of the moment of laughter. Secondly, if you are blind and you are following the blind, you now need an interventionist approach. You now need the rescue. You no longer have the capacity to handle these matters by yourself. In, in the legal system, there are people whose, whose personal lives are now put under administration. <laughs> there is now someone who is sane, who <laughs> must be appointed by the court of law yes. to decide what to do with your money mm -hmm. because you are a person of no ability to handle your own personal matters. But go on, I got a rope on a matter. You would die as I feel a hungum ban out of China with church. Can also get the wind of one thing and go garage or pump. I will not pass it to the church, you know, Chagua say, put in the copy Chaiko, Kunofan Wakin, the Queen, how Chazia. You see, Saka, are you not a delinquent? A spiritual delinquent, whose spiritual affairs should be um, should be handled by a spiritual court, <laughs> where someone must make decisions on your behalf on what to believe. You have no capacity by yourself to know what exactly are the reasons why one must choose a church. Mm -hmm. Your reasons for going to church are not just skewed. They are actually out of this world. When people ask you, why did you choose this church? Some of them, they will rush to the bathroom to laugh. They don't want to offend you. But this man seems to be educated. What is wrong with him? You are now a delinquent. You now need help with administrators of personal estates. The person is a mental patient. You are blind. You are following a blind man. You are going to soon fall into a ditch. Who shall help you? Go to send the gospel to redeem such that were blind. Mm -hmm. So that one day they will be singing, I may, amazing grace. Mm -hmm. How sweet that sound. I was blind, but now I can see. When they sing Amazing Grace, were they talking about physical blindness? <laughs> of course not. Yeah. Welcome to the moment of laughter. We always introduce it like this so that if there's anyone catching with us for the first time, they won't ask, where on earth has the church obtained such a mandate to convene for the purpose of testing other restaurants' foods? It's like we are a restaurant, we have decided to taste foods from other restaurants and telling you, this one is awful, this one is poison, that one should be arrested for making such a dangerous recipe. That's what we are here to do. If you are soon, you are, if you are easily offended, 
you may need a towel to wipe your tears very soon because you are likely going to be offended like the Pharisees we read in Matthew 15 from verse 12 to 15. Dawana nivaru kisa jipinga idzo mukufamba kwe wasinga one. Tine mapo fedu ari mu Afrika. Tine mapo fedu ari mu Amerika. Tine mapo fedu ari mu Europe. Tuna kuwa batila kutuwa fambe wa pinde mu road nenda kuna mungani. Tukusanga na nevamwe uwa notori mapo fuma ombe. Dova akundendere zara ni mapo fedu. Havasi kuona kuna mwara havashika to basira sei ma prophet yes ko avaru kuisa zvipinga idza vati no vaita ose munhu ari kutsvaga Jesu ano pesira isirwa chipinga idzo chinonzi spiritual father munhu ari kutsvaga Jesu ano pinga idzwa ne rest band acha shigere kuna mwari munhu chama mpa munhu akareba mutsuku murungu muga muti ndiye holy father kuna true holy father acha shigere Dosa katiri pano, chikona mombi. Sinyoro, kurundoro, umba. Tiri pano, kutiti vise ma stumbling blocks, morodi ya mapo fedu. We have proven beyond doubt. We have a world littered with the blind people. Those who see are actually very small. Those who have eyesight are a minority. The blind ones are the majority. It's time to help the blind men. Let us watch the first inscription to the unknown God. And we'll read the scriptures and show you what is wrong with what we are going to expose. And next is Pastor Ndlovu Ian from Zimbabwe. Jesus. What's up? She took a sebo? Nothing in this one. She this has a problem one. of sleep talking since childhood. I know because you have a say of getting up. Oku van buto. Jesus, you are the God of war and love. Your prayer. Come up. She took a sebo? It's heaven to me. By the name of Jesus. And next is Pastor Ndlovu Ian from Zimbabwe. Adako Musumba Ndlovu Avodei. Hey, Jesus. Raz up. She took a sebo? Nothing in this one can satisfy. She has a problem of sleep talking since childhood. I know because you have a yeba sayogera. Okufambuto. Jesus, you are the God of war and love. Your prayer. Come up. It's heaven to me by the name of Jesus. Hey! Yes, too. It's a rest of it. To me, nothing in the world can satisfy. Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry. Your presence. She took a sebo. So how's uh, Mr. Mugabe? He's, he's strong. <laughs> he's strong. Yeah, he is. So how's your church? It is struggling. 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 Yes. Nothing in this one is found. Jesus, you and the God I won't run dry. Your presence is heaven to me. Where the smallish pastor was helping you? The the smallish smallish pastor, he, he, he is in another town. He is in another town. He is in Kwanda, it's true. Oh. Yes, I know the smallish pastor was a sister. Where's your sister like this? Not exactly, but. He is at uh, he is at home in in Blauai where I come from. She is at it's true, it's true what you said, man of God is true. She does yes, she is even light in complexion. Yes. yes. 
Sometimes the stomach pains you here. Quite a lot, quite a lot. Eh? Yes, it's true, men of God, it's true. It pains me near the navel here. And what happened to your leg? Sometimes you could walk like this. Sometimes, yes. Sometimes I feel pain here. It's true. Ngoma yeni Pastor Do you do you know that this guy is a lecturer at university And I always talk about it education does not give one wisdom Education trains you to be able to execute a certain task in a certain uh, uh, designed format and instructed format. Education gives you knowledge that is limited to a specific area of study. It doesn't make you wise, education. <laughs> you, 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 you would actually say it's not true that this guy is a, a lecturer. When we are inviting learned people in Zimbabwe, he is one of the samples of what education <laughs> can do in Africa. <laughs> so, people of Zimbabwe, those who don't know Ian Lovu, he has been the one who has showered Zimbabwe with a lot of uh, predictions using a, a divination. He claims to be a prophet, but he is not. Apparently, Zimbabweans thought he was a man of God. Zimbabweans did not know that this man goes out of the country in search of spiritual powers, spiritual emancipation. This guy is called Kakande. <laughs> Kakande is a charlatan based in Uganda. Kampala, he runs a church called Synagogue, Church of All Nations, uh, just like T.B. Joshua's synagogue. He has a website on the internet, Kakande International Ministries, something like that. So, but there's something I, I, I noted, which I will say later. Let me address the spiritual problems with this footage. Those who see Ian in love in Zimbabwe, on the pulpit, they call him their spiritual father, their mentor. Mm -hmm. They don't know that when he goes to Uganda, Ian in love will be rolling on the floor like a madman in the name of spiritual empowerment and deliverance from demonic oppression. <laughs> what, a, what a pity. How does a man sent from Jesus report to another man claiming to be sent also from Jesus? That is, church is struggling. Huh? Pastor, so far, say? <laughs> Whose church? <laughs> Whose church is struggling? Mm -hmm. Let us read the three scriptures to find out who the church belongs to. Acts 20, 28. Acts 20, 28. Yes. Take it therefore unto yourselves. What should we do? And to all the flock over the which the Holy Spirit had made you overseers. Yes. To feed the church of God. Feed the church of God. Which he hath purchased with his own blood. Mm -hmm. The church belongs to God. Yes. God bought it with his own blood. Mm -hmm. So, Pastor, if I start a company... And then my company struggles. Do you go to report to another employee of another company that your company is struggling 
without reporting to me the owner of this company would you do that no what does kakande have that can improve Ian and Love's spiritual predicament at his church. What? In 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 15, the scripture says, If I tarry long, that thou mayest know how thou oughtest to behave thyself in the house of God, which, which is the yes, which is the church of the living God the pillar and the ground of the truth if the church is not doing well mm -hmm. number one, we should understand what doing well means because for us to say the church is not doing well we must have certain certain variables which we are analyzing mm -hmm. what are the symptoms of a struggling church mm -hmm. if the church is found is getting revelation if the pastor can receive messages to preach from God, then the church should not struggle. Because if the church is supplied with the word, the church will be healthy. Everything else that the church needs, it depends on the supply of the word. But of course, Mr. Ian Love does not preach the word. This one is a spiritual dandyhead with absolutely no clue about what the gospel is all about. Philippians, Philippians chapter 1, verse number 6, yes. from verse 3. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you. Why are you thanking God? Always in every prayer of mine for you, all making requests with joy. Okay. For your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now. He always focuses on the gospel. Mm -hmm. That's what Paul does. A true minister focuses on the gospel. And if you are sent from God, you should never struggle with the gospel because mm -hmm. the Lord will be supplying you with the gospel. The six. Being confident of this very thing. What thing are you confident about? That he which hath begun a good work in you, that God who began a good work in you, will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Oh, Pastor. <laughs> but when we get worried, should we not fly to Uganda and see a sorcerer, a false preacher, a thief, a charlatan called Kakande? <laughs> So many Zimbabwean charlatans flew to Uganda, some they flew to Kenya, some they flew to Nigeria in search of sorcerers and more evil charlatans to be empowered with. So Apostle Paul Pastor was confident mm -hmm. that God who had begun a good work in them mm -hmm. was going to perform it mm -hmm. until the day of Jesus Christ. Yes. In Matthew chapter 10, the Lord was sending them to preach. So, I want to tell you something here. Mm -hmm. He was telling them that they were going to find themselves with persecution mm -hmm. confronting them. Let's hear how he testified to the apostles who were being commissioned to go and preach. When you find tough goings in your missionary journeys, mm -hmm. go to Uganda, you'll find a Kakande there. <laughs> Report to him that you are struggling. Kakande will help you. Did he say that in verse 19? But when they deliver you up, take no thought of how or what he shall speak. How? For it shall be given you in the same hour what you shall speak. How is that? Verse 20. For it is not ye that speak. It is not you that speak. But the spirit of your father which speaketh in you. Oh, pastor. Yes. I know. If Jeremiah is struggling and we fly to Uganda, <laughs> we will be looking for someone to fortify us. Yes. But the Lord said, do not worry. Mm -hmm. What you shall do, what you shall speak. Even mm -hmm. when you are arrested, mm -hmm. 
the spirit of your father shall speak in you. Mm -hmm. Obviously, pastor, the spirit of the father is not in any love. Yes. It's clear. The spirit of the father is not in him mm -hmm. to tell him what to do when his church struggles. That's why he must go to sorcerers abroad. Mm. Our Lord spoke with me to 28 verse 20. He said, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. Yes, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Imagine, Pastor, if Jesus is with us always, mm -hmm. even to the end of the world. Mm -hmm. Do we need Kakande? Do we need Pastor Chris? Do we need Oyakilume or TB Joshua? My ministry is struggling. <laughs> huh? This is said, but if you, if let's watch this video again, you are going to see, Pastor, that I'm suggesting that Ian Love takes another profession. Let him leave this nonsense of his church mm -hmm. and go and apply for the position of a goalkeeper <laughs> with a soccer team. <laughs> because the, the manner in which Ian Love was falling. He, he looked to be a, a very, very good man at diving. He mm -hmm. dives professionally. That he cannot be falling under the spirit either of God or the devil. Mm -hmm. it, it's choreographed. It's well, it's well managed to make sure <laughs> Ian Love does not hate himself in the name of de receiving deliverance. Amufunge, Rima Zimbabweans. Kuti Ian in love, I get a gun of poor basset of butter, bore of dynamos. Anita Mari Pamano Pesera, Westcha, Mogana, Watford. Madonira Ian in love, Aka Oma. In a number of Otmun Murum, Mukuru Agadaru, Anogono Garinia, Jebudo, Nabasta, Bodia Ian in love, the Madonira, it's amazing. Yeah, and there seems to be an instruction, a, yes. a, a signal. A signal, which yes. was given by Kakande to say, it's not time for you to fall. <laughs> Let's watch how Ian Love falls down. Next is Pastor Ndlovu Ian from Zimbabwe. Jesus. What's up? She took a sebo. Nothing in this one can start this He has a problem now. of sleep talking since childhood. I know because Baba Yeba say you get up. Is this not a dive, Pastor? Yeah, it was a dive. Because he was standing tall. Yes. If it was a proper falling, mm. he should have fallen headward mm. or backward. Yes. But if he fell by the side, he made sure he squatted first mm -hmm. to reduce the impact. And then he went, he dived this way. <laughs> ah. Tofa no tomiti gole. Gole ian in love. Go keeper ian in love. Why don't you find a better job? This is not nice. And, and this, this, he is one of the respected prophets in Zimbabwe. Yes. Apparently people did not know that he got some powers from Uganda to do what he's doing. And, and take note, Pastor, that this happened before Mugabe died. He was asked about how is Mugabe. How is Mugabe, and yeah. he was told he's doing well, he's mm. strong. Mm. And what we have now is we have, we have, we have Ian Love, who is now at his improved version mm. after the Kakande visit. But I would like to say, in as much as, of course, there's not much to say about this, Ian in Love is a charlatan, and now we have proven that he acquired the powers to do sorcery and divination, and in most cases, he misses the mark. But I would want to talk about the lack of decency 
in our people. If you are a man of God, you are running a church, and you find another man of God from another church who has got issues to do with his ministry or issues to do with his personal life, would you do what Kakande did to Ian in love in the public? It's like you are a man or even president. When, when they go to meet at the SADC meetings, the African Union meetings, and other forums like the United Nations General Assembly, of course, presidents, they also do closed-door meetings where they talk about matters affecting their countries. There are personal issues that should never be done in the public. I don't like the arrogance of the Africans whenever they find themselves in a position of power where other people's dignity is on the line and at the mercy of their discretion. If Kakande was a true man of God and Ian in love was a true man of God, Ian in love should not have exposed himself like that. And Kakande, if he was a true man of God, he could have had a private session with a pastor from another church for the sake of his dignity and for the sake of the people who are following him. There is a possibility that a man of God may be given greater grace than this man of God and this man of God may need spiritual help from this other man of God. It, it shouldn't be done in an indecent way where this other a, a, a junior man of God, so to speak, must be embarrassed for this one to come out open and say, I am a powerful man of God. Even pastors from other churches, they are coming. I am also delivering them from demonic oppression. Now he's talking about his navel problems, his stomach problems, and his leg problems, which are not wrong if he wanted healing. There was nothing wrong with that. But if another man from the next door wants to borrow $10 from me, I don't have to bring out my wallet in the presence of my own children to lend my fellow men a small amount of money. I'm embarrassing my fellow, my fellow neighbor. Why should I do that? Why can't Africa learn to respect and to honor one another? Every time another man has something that you don't have, they must embarrass you to feel better that they are at a greater level, a higher level than you. This is not a sign of um, greatness. No, it's not. Savagery, that is at play. It's animal behavior. You want to be elevated by trampling on others so that you feel better about yourself. And this is again a sign that there is no spirit of God at play in these interactions. When we have the spirit of God, there are things that the Holy Spirit will tell you, it's not good for you to do this on these other people. As I talk to you now, I have helped so many people in matters that affected their personal lives. And I've never discussed those issues with anyone. I meet with the people from all walks of life. I meet with the business people. I meet with the politicians. Some of the meetings I do are private. And I respect those people's privacy. I'll never come here and say, I was with this man yesterday. Do you know what he's going through? He had to come to me for help. I don't do that. The only thing that I'm very vocal about in the public is when the doctrine is violated. Because the doctrine is a public matter. It has to be dealt with in the public. It's in the best interest of the public that the charlatans are exposed in the public. Because charlatans are not deceiving in their secret rooms. They are doing it in the public. Their corrections must also come in the public forum. If I was Ian and Lovo's wife, I was going to leave the home 
Aishi kandi siko kumba. Kano ndaka ngo mira kuti ndioneke. Dimika mama kwira ndege kunoumburuka kunge ndamba mumavaka shiba kuda. Look at the flow that Ian Love was rolling like a, like a donkey at a dunghill. Maishi ziva eremu kuti iye nana umbruka kudero. Oh, ya ku Zimbabwe, onye pezira onge munu mshinu. Iye achu umbruzi kwa mafaka da. Se mbarasi. Se mbarasi. Let's watch another Ian in Love video. To, to Christmas. I know some people will be angry because they are actually preparing for Christmas. I know I'm upsetting a lot of people. A lot of people, they follow our ministry because of prophecies. When I start to say things which they do not like, they, they say, ah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm I'll give you historic information. And the historic information, I sent some links to Pastor Mbosi in the morning. I will not cover everything. I will just read to you historic information, which I recorded in my diary about Christmas. And then you will make a decision on your own. Because some people have been puzzled. When they sent me messages around December 25, uh, maybe December 21, they say, Happy Christmas, Pastor, I ignore the message. And maybe send an unrelated verse of script. They wonder, what's wrong with this past? Some, they will say Christmas box. I don't know whether there's a scripture for that. <laughs> they will want boxes associated with Christmas from me. Today, at least I'm explaining in a sermon and next week why I don't celebrate Christmas. I have to tell you the things that you know. You go and investigate. If you investigate, you see other information that Christmas is not pagan in origin. Then you give me the information. I will start since 1992 to celebrate Christmas. But since 1992, the last Christmas that I celebrated, it was in December 1991. When I was fairly young, I was very young. Throughout my adult life, I've never celebrated Christmas. Why don't I celebrate Christmas? For the same reason why I don't go when there is a beer at my rural home. When there is a beer, to me, it makes a lot of sense if I want to worship Pakan gods, for me to worship the gods of my ancestors, the Ndlovus. If a person tries to make me celebrate Christmas, which I've never celebrated since 1992, I would just send them a link of my sermon so that they can, I would just cut a small piece of this sermon because it's a long sermon. I would separate it from the other part of the sermon where I was covering about God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Ian in Love's church has been around for quite some time, Pastor. And one day he says, I don't celebrate Christmas. <laughs> it's Christmas, Mr. Ian Love. It's Christmas. You don't have to violate the pronunciation of this word to appear spiritual. Since 1992, to 2022, Ian Love had never celebrated Christmas because Christmas is of pagan origin. Why did he not teach about it in 2020, in 2019, in 2018, in 2017? Because in all those years, he was doing it. Yes. The church was, was there. So he allowed his people to go and celebrate Christmas. But he himself was not celebrating Christmas mm -hmm. since 1991. He last celebrated Christmas in 1991. Well, I can tell you, believers, this man is a hypocrite. <laughs> the truth is these guys are learning from us. When we learned about Christmas, we were very e open and, and eager to share the knowledge with you. And we opened the scriptures. 
If you watch this video, you can look for it on his platform. He never opened the scriptures, really. He referred to the Encyclopedia uh, of Britannica. And he said that's where he got this information from. <laughs> so, Ian and Lovus, evidence of the pagan nature of Christmas are not the scriptures. Is the encyclopedia of the British, which is regrettable for someone who says he is an affluent scripture based preacher or pastor. Mm -hmm. Imagine a pastor Guti Mushinato Ziva Guti Chinichu Guapamba Panabashinura, Ma Maita, twenty, thirty years. Apostle Paul spoke about something that challenges um, what Ian Love did. Ian Love did not want to admit that he did not know the truth about Christmas mm -hmm. until recently. Because he knew that if he had said that, mm -hmm. people were going to tell him, you are coping Apostle Chwenga mm -hmm. when you talk about the pagan nature and the pagan origin of Christmas. Christmas is not just of a pagan origin. It's also pagan in nature. <laughs> yes. So... We have talked about it. We already have a, a, a message. I'm sure our people are going to give us a, 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 the, 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 the link on the, on, on the, on the sc uh, screen very soon where we talked about Christmas since 2015. We have never attended any Christmas. And when we talked about Christmas, we were very honest. We have learned these things now. I couldn't have told you that I knew about it in 1985 when I was born. I wasn't born an apostle, by the way. So I'm not ashamed to tell you if I learned something yesterday. I will tell you I learned it yesterday. It doesn't make me feel bigger to say I learned it 20 years ago. So in order for him to cover that aspect that he is taking teachings from us, He's learning from us, but he also criticizes us. He doesn't want to appear like he's our student. What does he do? He has to lie that he knew about it in 1991. Why were you quiet, Ian, in love about this? Let's listen to Apostle Paul about the counsel of God. Verse 26 and 27. He was yeah. bidding farewell to the church. Yes. Paul knew that his time to die had come. What does he say? Wherefore I take you to record this day. What do you take us to record about? That I am pure from the blood of all men. You are innocent of the blood of all men. For I have not shunned to declare unto because you. Because you have not shunned to declare unto us what? All the counsel of God. Some of the counsel of God. Oh. I would preach the other counsel after 20 years. I hold on to certain counsel so that when a convenient time comes, I will declare the other counsel of God. No. No. But, Pastor, when you look at verse 26, mm -hmm. it's actually a grave mistake. Yes. For you to know something is wrong with God mm -hmm. and you stop talking about it. Mm -hmm. He said, I am pure that is innocent mm -hmm. from the blood of all men. Because all that God taught me, I also taught it to you, all of it. Yes. I did not hold on to certain truths yes. since 1992. <laughs> so if the preacher knows the truth and he holds on to it, mm -hmm. does not declare it mm -hmm. to the people, he will be guilty of blood. Mm -hmm. It's murder to God. Yes. Because everyone who died in Ian and Love's church celebrating Christmas, before he's decided conveniently to talk about it, well, he knew about it. Mm -hmm. He 
the, the blood of such people is in his hands. That's what is recorded in, in Ezekiel 34. So we don't want to, to, to go into those scriptures. We don't have the time. But Apostle Paul has already said it, Pastor. Ukare gera kutaura zhinunjo wa uzu kwa na mngari. Kuti shino batira mwia evanu pa kuna mata mngari. Uka nyarara. Urkuto de uraropa kuna mngari. Urkuto de uraropa. Urkuto de uraropa. So, I want you to go in your own time uh, and read Ezekiel 33. I'd say 34 is 33. Pastor, I would just want you to read up to verse 5, but I want them to go and read up to verse 11. Yes. Again, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Yes. Son of man, speak to the children of thy people, and say unto them, When I bring the sword upon a land, if the people of the land take a man of their course and set him for their watchman. For their watchman, the preacher is a watchman yes. who warns the people of what God is instructing. Yes. I am a watchman. Each time God says something, I must let you know. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't obey God, the punishment of God will come upon you. Yes. If when he sees the sword come if upon the, the land. If the watchman sees the sword coming upon the land. He blow the trumpet. The watchman's job is to blow the trumpet. And warn the people. Warn the people, pastor. Yes. Christmas is not of God. Yes. You don't have to keep such wisdom since 1992. Mm -hmm. How many years are they, Pastor, from 1992 to 2022? Actually, 30 years, right? Yeah, 30 years. 30 years. 30 years. How can you hold the truth for 30 years? Mm. Verse 4. Then whosoever heareth the sound of the trumpet. So, Ian in love should have warned the people in 1992. Mm -hmm. Actually, 1991. <laughs> or maybe he knew about it in 1992 because he said he last held Christmas in 1991. Yeah. The moment he learned about it in 1992, he should have spoken about it. Yes. Then whosoever heard the sound of the trumpet so, Ian and taketh not warning. People should have been warned by Ian Love in 1992 yeah. if they decided to not take that warning. If the sword come and take him away, condemnation is coming upon them. His blood shall be upon his own their head. Their blood is upon their heads. He heard the sound of the trumpet. Yes. And took not warning. Yes. His blood shall be upon him. Yes. But he that taketh warning shall deliver his soul. Those who listen to the true gospel and make corrections will save their soul. Yes. Verse 6. But if the watchman see the sword come, if Ian in love learns about Christmas in 1992, and blow not the trumpet, Ian in love decides to keep quiet about it until 2022. And the people be not warned. And the people die celebrating Christmas. If the sword come and take any person the from among them, the condemnation of those who die of, 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 uh, observing pagan rituals. He is taken away in his iniquity. Yes. But his blood will I require at the watchman's hand. Did you see that? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> These are not lighter things. These are not lighter matters. Yes. So Paul was quoting Ezekiel 33 yes. when he spoke in Acts 20 and said, I take you to record this day that I am pure of the blood of all men, for I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. Kuziva shokwa diya mungari wo nyarara. Unotori mondi pa beri pa mungari. Roparewa nuricha wa richa tongwa richa vunzi kwa pamsoro pako. Musuwe kutongwa wa nuvese waka fila mchechi ma iye ni lovu. Wache observe Christmas aka nyarara. Vani hiva wacha ngeva tori muya eva nuwa aka uraye. Ya utinye. Utinye, usutinye. 
saka unungo chifamba uvozoti apo pane shumba yakatiza muchizarira mayaigara unogo yero saka nevanhu vari kuenda direction iyo onyarara azopedzira indi kuenda zvangu kunotenga muriwo ndo zvindine inazvo musaide kwamuri kuenda uko kune shumba muno uraiwa these matters are heavy and important but mr ian does not understand it this is where we say he is a blind man leading the blind he takes pride to say i have known this for the past 30 years <laughs> he doesn't know the repercussions of knowing the truth that can deliver a soul and deciding to put it under lock and key far away from the uh, 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 vulnerable souls Here in Jerusalem, we sometimes do special services. Each time the Lord shows us something, we have to convene quick, quick, pronto, to make sure that we do it. We declare unto you the counsel of God. Mm -hmm. Pastor Andy said. Yes. Those who have that 20 years, not a Miranda or an Aror, we have a Mandara. And it will not be a Mandro. Could Musa Magazi, that the Mandara was here. The Magadi Tower Rodan is now Borasi. Yes. <laughs> As we talk now, what is his explanation for his silence for those 30 years? Why were you quiet, Mr. Ian, about the pagan nature or the pagan origin of Christmas? This is regrettable. Why don't you just admit that you are listening to our messages and you are learning? You won't, you won't lose your dignity. Inga urukumburu kika wandu kenda kuyukuruwanda kuyuganda. Unosika kuyuganda kuyumburu kwa mavunge dongi. Uchipuwa zinu zisina umungari. Wadi kubu maguturuku ziza kwa tiri. Isutaka ziza Christmas za kanaki. Andi mrukona nyayashu. Tikato atina kumbu atina kumbu umburu zawani unokono to garapa suka zidza uri wakachena urumba mako oto tauro kuti ah pane nyasha dzakapuwa murume uyu pane zvimwe zvandino kunonge zvazvo ndisinga zvisise kuti anozvifamisa se asi ndiri kudzidza chakati nechakati nechakati it is arrogance and pride when people are learning Sometimes they want to be on the high horse. They don't want to acknowledge other people who have been given grace by God from which they are learning. There are so many people who are taking our sermons, taking them to their churches without telling their congregations that they are learning from us. That is not good. It is not of God. It's not of God. Let us find if we can find something about fighting in church. It appears like the devil has decided to expose charlatan churches in Zimbabwe <laughs> through dog fights. They are fighting like no man's business. Let's talk about fighting a little bit. Let's watch the videos first.
You want to come in the one who Pango e corona bus. All I'm saying is that we are I now understand it. That's true. This is just we have bus. We have money. We have money. We have money. See, George. In the corona bus, there is no phone. Phone is too Of course, we say corona, but I lose respect for you. Can I mention my principles and values? They don't think we corona is just. My daughter is born with corona. Can I mention my principles and values? They don't think we corona is just. My daughter is I respect you, but now that I'm to die. You know what is elder right now, you can't make my decisions. And then when you come in, never.
Pastor, what do you say about these developments? Yeah. It, it has never been like this before. What is wrong in our time? I think the, the shrines are being exposed, like you said. Uh, this, uh, this is an head of um, fight. Some of them, they are fierce, like the other one we saw in a FM, where I wonder whether these people, they used to attend the same church together. They really wanted to kill each other on that day. And uh, a lot of fights that we see on, in the church, uh, on the pulpit, pastors being dragged and a lot of complaints, some are complaining about uh, finances, which they are, say, they are saying they were abused. Ah, in the Church is, of Christ, in the, the Church International of Christ. Church of Christ. Yes. I, I was so, it's harrowing, it's, it's harrowing to see that image, uh, that footage, Pastor, where a man who is old enough to be our father mm -hmm. in the flesh, is being dragged and pushed around like that. Yes. In a church, how can we raise children who are able to respect adults? How are we going to raise children that are going to be well mannered? If yes. when they see if they see us pushing elderly people like that in the church. And, and, and these are people that are in the same church, Pastor. You remember what we talked about when we said we need to regulate how ladies, uh, how much they are participating in the church. You could see them. Nemaro kwa waka naka wa shibida ira. Mukasa change ira mchava wuna wedu mazima. Yava tanga ufutu kubida ira mchichi. Shumanga mchua na isu. As you know, both Villa Sagasi go to change his name to Kanamar and Ziriakada. It's not good. It's not good. There is no sweet spirit among them. Yes. It's not wrong to have different opinions, to have differing um, proposals on the table to tackle the same challenge. But this is not how church people should behave. Who is going to rebuke the politicians? Who is going to rebuke the state and the government officials when they cross boundaries of what which, that which is uh, modest and temperate in how they handle their, their affairs? There are posters of demonstrations in the church. <laughs> People are throwing stones at their fellow brothers and sisters in the same church. Mm -hmm. Now we find people pushing and dragging our elderly people like that because they are aggrieved that some monies were abused in the church. The church was supposed to be the most modest place under the sun where things are done in the most civil way. The issues that happen in the church should never be subjects of ridicule by those who don't believe. That's why we describe AFM as the apostolic fighting mission. These days, AFM seems to be doing nothing good but fighting. <laughs> we spoke about these things 10 years ago. And we said, these are not the true churches. You are going to see it for yourselves. And we told you that this gospel we are preaching mm -hmm. is going to cause them to expose themselves more and more. Because the spirit realm is charged with the true gospel that we preach. When we speak the gospel, we don't just speak to you. We also speak to the, to the environment. Remember, we fight against spiritual wickedness in high places. Yes. So the demonic world is unsettled by the true gospel. They are no longer as discreet and as clandestine as they were before. These things used to happen before, but not at this magnitude. It's embarrassing. 
when they invite pastors at the Evangelical Fellowship of Zimbabwe, all these fighting groups and hooligan groups, mafia groups, they are also part of the <laughs> Evangelical Fellowship of Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe mm. Council of Churches. When, when there is a prayer breakfast meeting, <laughs> the president invites these mafias mm. to pray for the nation. Mm. That's why you don't see us there. It's a circus of clowns and hooligans. Angamurgu church. Kwa furu wa visa. Shonza ana si kwa kusina mafisi. Nasangari mashaba cha yao nishukukia. Ii baba wewe wano zimfangiri wewe. Maizu watu wano shaba wano shakada. Mwano zika kuchechi ni shati ya kwa varuka. Ya varu wane mumwe wako. One day we hugging each other. How are you brother? We thank God for the love of Christ. The next day you are beating him up with the fists because of money and positions. Shame on you. Shame on you. <laughs> and this is what was, it was established by the leaders. The moment they wrote a church constitution and resolved that they are going to vote for the president of the church, they set the church on a collision course with the politics of the land. The house of God was desecrated because of greed, because of greed, because of lust, because of hunger for power. It's not good. So, can I change that way for me? Unongo jitu chirikuwe nda ujeje ili nae, nae tete, nae mkoma. You must put on gloves. Now, if you're an FM member, you have to go for karate lessons. You have to improve your fighting skills. You never know. A fight can ensue any time soon. Mote nda unozizi kwa taekondo, atete. Paniki waka feka maroko, mote feka matrausi mkati. Choko na kubondoka. Pacha ni wako manya. Yeah, it's, it's very, but very embarrassing. No, those were, were, were very big stones which were being thrown. <laughs> yes, I saw another video, maybe it was not coming out, where a certain man was, was hit by a stone on, on the forehead. At that particular place? Yes, yes, and blood was oozing out of his head. Zuna intika irene wana vaninga wae na mwayamucho ene pasta. Shiri nani kakutu utoro wazo haku. Pane musimu zadombo. Ote mamunu. Haka firi wana jeso. Pachechi. Hakana. Azi itike ni mtu wakada. Mwaringa atire girele. We are not happy to expose these things because it really is a very sad development. <laughs> when people that belong to the same church develop differences mm -hmm. that become so big to the extent that they can't reconcile until the church is divided into factions, the Chiangwa faction and the Mandao faction. How can the church bridge gaps among politicians? How can they do it? The politicians who come to help the, the church to come To make to, peace, to yes. come together. Yes. It's embarrassing. Ah, kutobuda church kutori nani, Pastor? Kutobuda church kutori nani? I think it was a kacharamba katri genta ngeyangu. Hmm. We want to look at the president of Zimbabwe's utterances because I want to talk something, I want to say something about this matter. Let's do that.
Kutirimwe Zuba. Jovanga, get a pump, put up the gun, one against the last gun, a chin guard. What are you doing? We are going to be a central committee of questions. Why are you going to be a don't go and Ya ka sona ka zukuti leki. Ungada urimenda ka I see your car. Energize, Lakuti. Eh. One walk words, and I was going to put him for a night. Ah, Tango, I'm a combat troll. Call him Tanga Zan Pif. Kutirim Suva. I see your car. Energize, Lakuti. Eh, one walk words, and I was going to put him for a night. Ah, thank God, I'm a combat troll. Do you know that if it was in other places, Pastor. Yes. The day President Mnangagwa said these words, the people were going to ask him to resign with immediate effect. He was making a speech, and in his speech he said, if we had known mm -hmm. that the drought is as a result of the, the Kwazana of the Kwazana residence. Yes. He said, we would have said to the army, let's, let's mop them up and beat them up. Mm -hmm. let's, let's gather around them and beat them up. Clearly, and this can be a matter that can be taken to any court of law. The president admitted that he is using the army mm -hmm. for his personal interest to harass, to torture, to persecute, to oppress the people of Zimbabwe. So I have not too much to say about our president, but I have not been talking about Zimbabwean politics for some time now. I am sure you can agree with me. I have not been doing that. I have no intention to do, to start, because I, the moment I told you the things that I said last time about our situation, I said Zimbabwe needs a savior. Those were my last words. You remember, Pastor? Yes, I remember. And after saying that, there's nothing more to say. <laughs> There's nothing more to say. Yes. Those who want to ask anything, they should go back to what we said. But today, as a man of God, I also have a job that I should not abdicate on. I have a job to always and constantly speak on what God would be... Uh, expecting in our land so that 
we know how to find favor with God. So there are two people now. We have pastors and prophets and bishops who love to pray for Zimbabwe. They attend prayer meetings with the president. And then there is me. You don't find the politicians at our church. You don't find me at those prayer meetings. There are two reasons why I don't attend those prayer meetings. The first reason is that I won't come back alive. They've expressed their interest to kill me several times and in diverse manners. You see? And make no mistake about it, I think I may also want to say this, Pastor. I am one person who has never desired to live anywhere outside my country, no matter the financial challenges we may face. I'm a homeboy. I love to be in my own country. So my absence from Zimbabwe has nothing to do with the state of our country. It has all to do with my inability to function. Things had become so bad that it was not just about the fear that they are going to attack me as they did so many times, but the space was now closed. I no longer had space to do my work. I could no longer go to the first street place where I was going to preach. I could also not go to church and do my church services in the normal way. They harassed me all day round. So I, I, I want to say this because there are people who do not understand what exactly is happening. I can tell you that if my security in Zimbabwe is guaranteed, at any time of the day, you will find me in Zimbabwe. I don't admire any other country. I believe when God made me a Zimbabwean, he wanted me to play whatever role I play from within my own country. But I speak to these political issues also. Maybe before I do that, I should say there are two reasons why I don't attend. The first reason is I, 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 it's not safe for me to attend mm. prayer breakfast meetings where after prayer people will drink tea. I won't be able to drink that tea because it will be poisoned. But the second reason is it's not allowed for the president to call me to prayer. It's not scriptural. The president cannot plan a prayer day and invite me. It's not allowed. I am the man of God. The president is not a man of God. If prayer is to be made, the initiative for prayer can never come from the president. He has no spiritual ground to call for prayer. So every time the president calls for prayer, by making that call, he has already excluded me. I don't attend on that behalf, on, on that basis. Yes. So it has to be clear. So why do we speak like this? We speak like this because as, as desperate as our situation at home has become, we still need the voice of God on yes. what is the way forward. And you don't find the voice of God from everyone who purports to be hearing from God. Before someone is believed to be hearing from God, whether or not what he says come to pass, it's another story. There are parameters that those who know God must examine to check. If we want to find out who can we ask counsel from God with, because people don't just go to ask counsel from God. They have to find out, how do we know a true man of God? I'm not going to teach that either. So, the counsel of God is obtained from a true servant of God and not from everyone who says he hears from God. Some many, many months ago, I asked the question, is our president fit for the office? And those are some of the remarks mm -hmm. that made them to be so angry and they vowed to take my life. 
But I don't know believers, I don't know Zimbabweans, and anyone who is in his right mind. How on earth does a population attend a rally? And at that rally, the president threatens the people and declares that the military mm. is now a weapon of his party. And then people clap hands for such rhetoric and reckless utterances. How is that possible? Yes. I told you Africa is cursed. You said Apostle Juenka doesn't want Africa to be blessed. Is this a sign of a blessing? When a president talks like this, is this a sign of a blessed nation? Pastor. It's, it's very, very difficult now to try to figure out because the, the, the security or the military, they must secure... The people. The people. Yes. But if they now, if the security is now the threat, then how great is the threat? If we had a proper military that is that knows their constitutional mandate, the commander of the defense forces the following day was supposed to issue a statement to the nation. We distance ourselves. That is what he should have said. The military distances themselves from the statements of the president. They are not just insensitive. They are reckless. They make, they paint a picture that the president uses the military against the citizens who are the bosses of the military. In America, it happened. There's a general, we played that video some time ago, who came out and made a press statement and he apologized to the American people for, 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 for um, accompanying the president on something that was not ethically right for a uniform serviceman to be a part of. The military is there to protect the citizens of the people. The military survives on the citizens. The Zimbabwean people are the ones that pay the salaries of every soldier in uniform and every police officer and not the president. When they are taking oath of office, the soldiers, they pledge to defend, to protect, and to uphold the constitution of Zimbabwe. The statements of the president were not just inflammatory. They were uh, uh, um, a confession of what he has been doing since he took office. If somebody dies and, and is, get, is gunned down by the military, it's no longer necessary to do a commission of inquiry. The president already announced whenever he feels that the population has done something wrong, he sends the military to beat them up. That's very unpresidential to the extent that Mr. Mnangagwa does not deserve anymore to be described as His Excellency. He is no longer His Excellency by making such utterances. He is not fit to hold that office because of these utterances. He is not. But I have already questioned the mental health of our president. I wonder when I did that, I didn't err by not questioning the mental health of our people. I'm beginning to realize that it's not just the president who needs to visit the psychologist's room and get them evaluated. How do you celebrate tyranny? How can we ask why, why the president is so cruel to the people if we are the ones who are granting him a pledge of impunity? Do whatever you do, Mr. President, nothing will ever happen to you. Mm -hmm. Why are we never listening to politicians 
and question what they say. Why don't we listen to them? When the president said these words, did anybody listen to these words? Did anyone at all hear him speak? It's a question. I'm wondering. This is not right. The mindset of our people is more corrupt and corroded than the mind of the president. In certain free world countries, that very night, there was going to be an uproar in the streets. Take and go. You are no longer the father of the nation. You are now the butcher of the nation. You don't deserve to hold that office. There is no man of God who ever speak like this. <laughs> because everyone is selling their souls to them so that they may find a space to live freely. In Africa, it's either you are for them or you are against them. There is no middle ground. There are people who actually believe today that what I'm speaking today is because I don't love the president. I don't know what exactly they call love. There are people who believe that one day I want to run for office. That's why I criticize. This is not a criticism. This is a comment that exactly addresses what happened. Every sane person could be saying exactly what I'm saying right now. If you think there's nothing wrong with what the president said, you need to take your medication. You are not in your right mind. Let's play it and let's play the other stuff again. This is, this is amazing. This is appalling. This is disheartening. Eh, <laughs> Kona miyokutanga Zan Pif Anitika Musangano wedu Musangano wenaka Musangano wedu ifa Musangano wataka kuwa na chuofi Musangano wambu ya nianda Wambiri nambu 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 ya nianda Wambiri uh, Comrade Chitando, that when I was member of parliament for Kwekwe, I constructed a state of the art mortuary with 12 bays. Very cool. Mukati Macho. Saka Ndikati Nivan Womumbizo Kwekwe. Pane Price, your family Chataka Kisa Munumu. Ah, kandi kuspite kwa kuna mwanga tosha ya wakabvango ina price. Pata pinda mocha rumta wana eh, chitanda ane six ma days eh, ma bodies. Ano tonorera. Anago pinza ruboko anago. Some very many years from now, our children and our unborn children are going to spit on our graves and they are going to not like to be associated with us. They are going to feel very ashamed that we had a, a president whose mental health was not stable and nobody figured it out 
and nobody questioned it. Not many, many years, very few years from now, actually, when all this circus is over, our children, some are in their diapers right now, and others are still struggling to walk. They are crawling. They are going to ask us when we are in our gray years, and they are going to say, Daddy, <laughs> were you in a state of coma for maybe decades when these things were happening? Were you drunk the whole year round and all, all this time, maybe for 10 years we were drunk or something? How on earth do Zimbabweans see this president of ours and you know, to question his mental health? I wonder. Why I say his mental health, it's, it's because he enjoys speaking like this, when he talks things that do not make sense, things that are actually very offensive to the people, he likes it and he laughs and he, he looks around himself to see if people are seeing the joke in what he's saying. That is not, those are not symptoms of someone whose health is, is 100% well. It's not fine. It's not fine. I'm telling you. He offered a prize for the first person to die and go into the mortuary that he constructed with his money. Mm. And this man is supposed to build roads for us. And this man is supposed to build the economy that provides jobs to the youths. And this person is supposed to uphold the constitution to save the people of Zimbabwe. Who brags about the temperature of a mortuary cold room? He must be entered into the Guinness Book of Records. I'm sure they will find some title or some description that fits him. I don't want to take that responsibility. I don't. If you tell me today about elections, this is what I will be thinking about. <laughs> I have nothing to talk about. Which elections? With whom? I hope we are going to mature and I hope something is going to happen. Because... I can assure you, our nation has never been where it is since we became independent Zimbabwe. No, it's, it's, <laughs> it's not nice. Ah, no, 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 no. I will read the scripture before we go. We are going to do another moment of laughter next week. We have got some unfinished business. But of course, I've got to, I've got to read a scripture where you can find the interaction that must be there between the church and the state. What should be the role of the preacher in affairs of the state? Because there are people who actually believe that um, I shouldn't comment at all about these matters. There are people who believe that my place is not to comment on politics. I should stick to the church and to salvation matters and to, 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 to preach the gospel for the salvation of mankind. Wow. I want to read the book of First Kings. First Kings, chapter number 19. Uh, verse 17, chapter 21, 
verse 17. Chapter 21, verse 17. Okay. And the word of the Lord came to Elijah the Tishbite, saying, The word of the Lord came to Elijah the Tishbite, saying what? Arise. Arise. Go down to meet Ab, the king of Israel. Yes. Which is in Samaria. Yes. Behold, he is in the vineyard of, Nab of Naboth. Yes. Whither he is gone down to possess it. And thou shalt speak unto him, saying, Thus says the Lord, Hast thou killed and also taken possession? And thou shalt speak unto him, saying, Thus says the Lord, In the place where the dogs licked the blood of Naboth, shall the dogs lick thy blood, even thine. Okay, let's end there. The word of the Lord came to Elijah the prophet. Yes. What did the word of the Lord say to Elijah? Go to, down. Go down to meet. To meet the king. Yes. And these are the things which you shall say to the king. Mm -hmm. Speak to the king and say, You have killed Naboth and taken his field. Mm -hmm. The blood, the, the, your blood shall be licked by the, by the dogs mm -hmm. the day you shall die. Mm -hmm. The man of God was not kind. He never looked for strategies with which he can please the king. He spoke what God had said to him. But I like the fact that God spoke to the prophet and said, go down mm -hmm. and speak to the president. Mm -hmm. So, I want you to know that it is going to be something that shall always and all the time be important to not forget. Don't forget what I'm going to say now. God has allowed this degeneration to take place for such length of time so that when the dust settles, our value system in Zimbabwe is going to be greatly uh, impacted. We are going to adjust. There are people who were very much looked at with so much esteem, but because of this era of our politics, people are not going to look at them the same way. Our education system, our traditions, our culture, our values, they've been, they've been tested at the highest level and the results are at all, it, 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 not at all pleasing. The results are actually disturbing. As, as, we, as, we, as we sit here, if you ask any Zimbabwean, what exactly does Zimbabwe stand for? What are the traditions of the Zimbabwean culture? You don't know at all. Everything has been put on the market and the highest bidder detects what must be done and what must be. We are going to realize that God is going to give us new people whom we are going to look at and say, we didn't know that this one is actually better ideas than the rest of the people we were looking up to. We are at a time where interventions are going to be needed. And by the way, things are not well if you don't know. And things have never been this low like they are now in Zimbabwe. Things are not well. There are certain reports that are being uh, swept under the carpet so that people may not go into a public mode of hysteria and panic. Things are not well at all if you go to the hospitals. You are going to re realize that our media houses are being threatened. They should never release information of the chaos and the, the, the dire situation our medical institutions are at. There are not enough doctors and nurses in the hospitals. People are dying with at, 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 at rates that have never happened in our public medical institutions. And it is because 
we have created a monster and the monster is matured to a level where it feels that nobody can dare stop it. And what I'm saying to you now is that if you are a Zimbabwe, your hope is that God is going to raise people who are going to have a mind that is sober in everything, not just the politics, everything. Everything has been corrupted and everything has been corroded, whether it's politics, whether it's industry, business, whether it's po po a, a, a proper professionals that are in their professions, service professions, whether it's the medical profession, the legal profession, the educational profession, everything has been corrupted. If we are going to build Zimbabwe again, we are going to need to start afresh to design a proper legal framework that makes lawyers to provide a quality professional service because it has become a, a, a haven of legally affluent thieves. <laughs> If you go into the medical profession, our doctors have been turned into thieves. If you go into the teaching profession, our teachers have been turned into looters. They have been turned into robbers. They are robbing parents by coming up with very, very absurd terms to steal money from struggling parents in the name of supplementing their inadequate salaries from the government. Everything is broken down. Everything. And while well, at least we are, we are languishing in such a difficult situation, we have a man of God or men of God who are rising up to say, we have the best leadership since independence. We are a blessed nation. Show me the sign of a blessing in Zimbabwe. And that day will be my last to speak on the pulpit. Show me the sign of a blessing. The blessing that we have is that which I'm talking today about. The gospel that seeks to bring us back to sanity. The best I can say now about Zimbabwe, I can tell you, Zimbabwe is now a mental patient. The population is not different from the leadership. The things we tolerate should never be tolerated. The things we ululate and whistle for, the things we clap hands for and give ovations to. In certain places, there will be a public disapproval, a public uproar, but we don't. If you think that we are educated, then you must declare what you are smoking. Because very soon, you'll be buried alive. Before I go, I want to show you something that we have already talked about, but we will not stop talking about. I want to talk about Job's color. I want you to see a picture of Job's color. I'll talk about him and nothing will happen. I will not apologize to anyone. And if you think that what I'm saying, I should not be saying it. Just quit, just exit this page and go and squander your, your time with other useless aspects which excite you. We will talk. We will never stop talking. I represent the true church of Jesus Christ and there is no man of God in Zimbabwe who has a better opinion about these things that he has ever shared like what I've done. I have risked my own life to speak the truth because the church must stand for the truth at all times, even when it is not fashionable to do so. We, as the true church of God, we speak against the political persecution that Mr. Job Sikala is going through 
in the hands of a captured judiciary in Zimbabwe. This man does not deserve to have spent more than six months in prison without having been convicted of any crime after having been arrested and prosecuted more than 10 times before and with zero conviction, the state is holding Mr. Sikala unconstitutionally and illegally. We condemn the incarceration of Mr. Sikala as the true church and we call upon the government of Zimbabwe to release this man and not use the judiciary to achieve political mileage and political gain. Our courts are captured. Our police are captured. Our magistrates, our high court judges, our Supreme Court judges, the constitutional court is captured. If it was not so, this man could have been granted bail more than five months ago. The postponement of his court hearings and the dilly-dallying in the courts of law is not justifiable by any standard. We are not going to be afraid to speak out. And this is a sign of cowardice on the part of the president and his, Ako, Ako, uh, his, 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 his stooges, his minions his accomplices in, in crime. It's a crime against the law of the land to hold someone in court for political reasons. It's a crime. This is a crime that is being committed by the state, by the president, by the minister of justice, by the minister of home affairs. It's a crime that the president is committing. Of course, we are not going to address Mr. Nelson Chamisa. There is nothing to say about it. I'm sure uh, he, would have, he would better have Mr. Scala inside the cells than for him to be out and be his deputy in his activities. We don't want to say more than what I've already said. Those who are angry at me because they think I hate Mr. Chamisa. Of course, <laughs> very soon, very soon you, you will start to see. <laughs> you don't see, it's not your fault. I, I, I can't be responsible for your blindness. But if you are blind, do not think that everyone is blind. Some of us, we are men of good. <laughs> I'm a man of good. Am I not a man of good? I know a lot. Don't provoke me to say a lot. I don't want to say anything about Mr. Chamisa. But uh, to Zimbabweans, let us do whatever we can to pressure Mr. Mnangagwa to stop abusing the judiciary for his political ambitions. There is no reason why Job Sikala should be incarcerated to this date. His wife needs a husband. His children need a father. It's very cruel and it's a sign of cowardice. Very soon he's going to say he won resoundingly an election. But that's not a win. That's not how people win contestations. You want to go into a competition you stab your competitor in the back. And then when he struggles to run, you say you outran him and you won the competition. As it is right now, the electoral play food has already been uh, 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 biased and tilted in their favor. Mr. Sikala is a vice president of a political party, the biggest opposition in Zimbabwe, by keeping him locked up. Mr. Mnangagwa has already weakened the opposition. This is not how fair politics is done. And this is not a sign of strength. It's a sign of weakness. 
We can't run in a marathon and win the marathon by maiming me that I can't use both my legs to run. Look at them. They gave ZTV the best television in Zimbabwe, a television award in Zimbabwe, in the NAMA Awards. How can you be the best when you are the only one? How man, when you do write him sorry. How does ZTV win the best TV station award in Zimbabwe when it is the only television station in Zimbabwe? We know that there are no men, not more than one television station. We know that the state is good at creating uh, pseudo institutions to appear like they are competitors when they are a, 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 a instruments of the same of the same state. We know that. So this is not this is not something that we 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 love. I would want to say something about Mr. Trevor Nube. Um, is very is doing a very good job in interviewing important people in our country and speaking truth to power. He is disillusioned and is disgruntled, as every Zimbabwean is, about the state of our country. But what I find to be not right, I don't want you to like me. I'm not ice cream. So you can go ahead and hate me for all I care. I will always speak my mind. And when I believe something to be upright, I'll speak out. Mr. Trevor Nguwe, to me, is somebody who had a lot of influence as one that ran one of the most um, influential media houses in Zimbabwe and is a very, very respectable person in the media industry. And he is also sound in his, in his articulation of the Zimbabwean issues. But what I find with him, I find him as a person who might be trying to get back his soul. But he was not much of um, a person to admire when you look at his reaction after the coup. And when you listen to what he said after he was disappointed with Mr. Mnanga Gwa, he said, I supported him because I felt let's give him a chance. Maybe he wants to do things differently. These utterances from Mr. Trevor Nguve are a great cause for concern. I admire his, his proficiency as an academic and as a professional. I don't admire his integrity. I question the integrity of his soul. If I would have a conversation with him, I would have wanted to understand what was his criteria or what was his basis for that work. To believe that Mr. Mnanga could do things differently. What was his basis? Because as a journalist, he had written and published so many articles about ZANU-PF. The Thagari machine in ZANU-PF has always been Mr. Mnanga Gwa's little baby. Wherever there was hooliganism, wherever there happened the murder, spillage of blood, wherever there was subjugation of people to intense and extreme oppression, Mr. Mnanga Gwa's fingerprints are there. On what basis did Trevor Nguwe give him that benefit of the doubt? So I don't want to identify with someone who does ideologies of convenience, principles of convenience. When everyone starts to complain, they start to say, we also want to complain. But when they get a benefit, or when they are hoping to get a benefit, they, they do things differently. I don't. 
it's a very good thing that he's speaking now and I admire the work he's doing. But I'm not convinced by the integrity of his soul. I believe that if he gets, if he gets a different position in the economy today, he can sing for his supper just like everyone is doing. If you want to find someone with a strong personality, listen to them at a time of convenience. That's where you can tell where this person's loyalty is. I'll give you another example of somebody whose soul is extremely questionable. I'll give you an example of um, Professor P.L.O. Lumumba of Kenya, a very educated man, a very well articulated man, a very informed man about the problems that are affecting Africa. But what happened in Kenya is Mr. Uhuru Kenyatta stole an election. And when he stole an election, Mr. Raila Odinga took him to court. They provided overwhelming evidence that Uhuru had stolen an election. And after the court considered the facts put on the table, they declared the election now and void. And they went for a runoff. That is when Mr. Uhuru Kenyatta was said to have won. The same man who talks about absolute power corrupting African politicians, he was the attorney who was representing Uhuru Kenyatta in court, defending a man who had stolen an election in a court of law. When somebody does that to me, I doubt the integrity of your, your soul. You have got a head that is full of brilliant ideas. Your only problem is you have got the soul of a prostitute and your soul is up for sale. It's just a matter of where and when we are going to find the best buyer and the highest bidder. So we, we have a serious problem where we have got demons running the African continent mm -hmm. and we now have those who are proving and who are, are, who are attempting to, to, to present themselves as probably the, 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 the messiahs of the African continent. When you look at them also, the messiahs, they are also very questionable. They don't stand on one side of the aisle and identify with the values from the beginning of their careers up to the end. They don't. They flip-flop depending on which one gives them the biggest platform to speak before the cameras. I don't. I can watch him and take a, a, a lesson or two, but I don't believe everything that he says that is speaking from the heart. Because when you speak from the heart, you must also prove with your character that this is what I stand for. And for this cause, this is why I admire Julius Malema of South Africa. People may accuse him of all the excesses in his radical politics, but there's one thing that Africans need to learn from him. He stands with his, with his, with his ideas from the beginning to the end. He is not an ideological flip-flopper. He is not a political flip-flopper. He, he is not going to put his soul up for sale, like what we are seeing now. I would like to end by also commenting on something that I think is worth talking about. If Zimbabwe wants to recover itself from this difficult situation, we need to find out who are the people in our country with the best interest of the country in their hearts. Because a country needs to be built, and a country will be built by its own people. It's unfortunate that the president is working with the mantra, but when he says that, we don't see signs of building a country. We see evidence of vandalism. Mr. Mnanga Gwas mantra should be, because Zimbabwe is not showing signs of construction and development. 
Zimbabwe is a sign of a state that has been run down. We really need people who build the country, not those who talk about building the country while they are destroying the country. Zimbabwe is not being built. Zimbabwe is at its lowest since independence. It's going down. If things go as they are now for the next 10 years, there will be no country to talk about. We will go down into the levels of Malawi or Mozambique or Democratic Republic of Congo. I've been to those countries, by the way. I know what I'm talking about. Vandalized countries, stagnant economies. I want to say, if you listen to Mr. Tendai BT, you can actually discover that finally we have an individual who follows the discourse of the national uh, development our agenda with a heart that bleeds for his people. From the time he became a politician to this day, of course he made mistakes. But even those mistakes that he made, you don't see any, any reason to doubt his commitment to the well-being of the people. When you listen to him articulating the Zimbabwean problems, you can actually see that this is one of the people we should have as leaders. Why should we commend people when they are dead and say, he was a patriot, why not do it when they are alive? If we are able to say this one is destroying the country, we must also be able to say this one is doing something that builds the country. And I can tell you today, I have no shame to say what I'm saying. I watched the video where he was commenting on um, the, 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 the issue of the state of the economy, the national budget, which the minister had announced recently. And I can tell you, um, we have a serious problem. Because when you look at, yes, he did it at ZFM Studio, I want to encourage everyone to watch this video. How can the government at any given time issue out a statutory instrument to compel banks to convert your own hard-end foreign currency into a useless local currency? How on earth do we accept that as a population? And there is no one who addresses these issues with the aggression that they deserve, with the consistency that they deserve, like Mr. Tendaibit. Of course, our, our dear Nelson Shamisa will be busy chasing other things. He has no time for those issues. And we also want to encourage our people to develop a, a heart that desires to stand up and say, if you know that you are capable of leadership, you should stand up and, and, and play a part in building a nation. We have a situation where those that are capable, they love to hide behind those that are not capable. And then we wonder why things are not done properly at the end of the day. That's regrettable. Our government is not just oppressive and tyrannical. It has become a theft-driven theft government. They survive on stealing money from the citizens. Pensioners contributed foreign currency to their pension, pension programs. And after some years, the government takes all the foreign currency. They say, we are now giving you your pension in local currency. The money cannot buy a loaf of bread. And they issue a statutory instrument. And after some time, when they are broke again, they say, we are now opening foreign current accounts. Bring your foreign currency. They have done it three times now since the inclusive government. We should not allow this to continue to happen. Instead of wasting time 
watching useless videos of useless people on social media. You should rather use time to listen to people who can tell you how things can be fixed in our country. Yeah. You will never hear him speaking on national television or on, 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 on national television, ZBC TV, as address are these issues. They will never give him the airtime. Why can't they allow him to speak so that the whole nation may hear him? If he is bluffing, if he is not saying the truth, let them bring their own people and, and debate these matters. Why do we have a one-sided story on public media houses which are paid for by the taxpayers' money? ZBC TV does not belong to ZANPF. We pay for ZBC TV to exist. But they are censoring the truth because they don't want you to know how much they are stealing and how much they are abusing. There is no angel who will come from heaven to build our country. We are going to need to join hands and yes. build our country together. Yes. You'd rather listen to Opo Chungono, to Tendai BT and others who would say something that addresses these problems and find out where you can be and how much you can contribute. Don't listen to these charlatans and clowns who tell you that the president is a man anointed by God to, to build a country. God never anointed Mr. Mnangagwa to build any country. The country is held at ransom by the political elite. The population has turned themselves into court jesters. We hope something is going to change. And we will talk. If the politicians can say Pamberina Jehovah, why do you think I should not talk about politics being a man of God? <laughs> what does Pamberina Jehovah mean? Could Pamberina Jehovah not even a pastor? Jehovah, Rufa Kashiti, KPS, NPF, do I move to Pamberina? Yeah. No, we don't allow it. They, they want to talk about God. But the politicians, they talk about God. Yes. But they say the church must not talk about politics. Yes. And those who are squirrels, they tuck their little toes between their legs and they say, let's respect our kuru. Before you demand me to respect you, show me that you are worthy of my respect. And if you prove that you, you, you deserve my respect, you won't need to demand it. I'll give it to you free of charge. Respect is not demanded. It is end. You don't deserve it. You don't deserve my respect. I'm a man of God, by the way. Mm -hmm. I speak for God. If you wanted to pray tonight about Zimbabwe, you don't need to pray anymore. What I have said to you is God's position regarding our nation. You can rather pray for these matters that I've addressed to be addressed the God's way. Pray that God may raise people who are willing to get their hands dirty in the process of cleaning our nations. Because you can't clean a house and keep your hands clean. It's impossible. Pray for strength. Pray for bravery. Pray for wisdom. We have too many cowards in our countries and this is the reason why dirty politics is thriving all year round. Pray that God-given and God-ordained leaders may manifest. Pray that God may show us proper leaders and take away imposters who are being paid by politicians to lie to us that they want to solve the problem when they are part of the problem. Pray that we may have a generation of sober people who will not celebrate politicians who are preying on them. Pray for resistance to all forms of subjugation and tyranny and oppression. If you are a Zimbabwean, 
you go outside the country and you, you walk around with a police clearance. You want to prove that you are a law-abiding citizen. Has it ever occurred to you that the police which have declared you to be a law-abiding citizen is itself a criminal organization? <laughs> the problem with abuse of the judiciary, Pastor, where there is no justice in the courts of law, it makes everyone a criminal because those who are supposed to face the, 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 the wrath of the law, they are walking free. Those who are supposed to be free are in jail. It makes it impossible for you to say, I am a law-abiding citizen <laughs> because there are people in prison who are innocent and everyone knows they are innocent. And yet they are the military warriors who should be going to court. They are not. How do you say you are a law-abiding citizen when the state is a criminal state? The institutions of justice should never be tempered with. They complicate everybody's life. There should be justice in the courts of law. The magistrates and the prosecutors should never be used by the politicians to terrorize their perceived enemies. It complicates the whole image of the society. If I go to court today, I may have committed a crime. If I'm convicted, but because the courts are not credible, I can use that card and say, I was wrongly convicted. And everyone will not believe that I was guilty and that's why I got convicted. It's because the courts have lost their credibility. This is a problem which mm. they have created. Yes. If you go to court today and you are acquitted, people will say, probably you paid the judge. That's why you were declared innocent. How come you were declared innocent, but we know an innocent man has served five years in jail? The system is, is no longer credible. The systems of justice have lost their credibility, and it's a very big problem. We are going to replace all those benches and hire new judges because these ones are corrupted by the system. There are very few of them who are trying as much as they can to remain clean. But it's impossible for the hippo to come out of a muddy water without mud. It's impossible. It's not difficult. It's impossible. <laughs> In one way or the other, they will force you to, turn, to taint your, yourself so that they may feel happy that they have got like-colored sheep in the fold. But it doesn't mean that we want to discourage our people from joining the judiciary. We need God-fearing people there. They should try as much as possible to do their work professionally and ethically. Yes, it's a mistake for Lugumalaba to still be in the service to this day. It's a mistake. That was a mistake that Mnangagwa committed and it also increased the dent on the credibility of the judiciary. That man is saved for his term according to the, to, the, to the rules of the Public Service Commission. He is at his retirement age. Malaba should go. We will speak about it because it's an obscenity. It's a travesty of justice. It's not a good precedent. We have so many intelligent and qualified and experienced lawyers in Zimbabwe. Malaba is not a savior of the judiciary. He is not the best man at all. We have best judges who are better than him. Why should we keep an old man who should be busy attending to his grandchildren there? Why should we do that? We don't need Malaba in the Constitutional Court. We don't need Malaba in the, in the, Justice, the Judiciary Services Commission. We don't need Malaba 
in the Supreme Court. It's a mistake. And these are the foundations of the loss of credibility in our, in our judiciary. When I go to court myself, I don't expect justice in the Zimbabwean courts of law. So I don't expect justice in the <laughs> there is no professionalism in the judiciary. Why should I hire a lawyer to defend myself? Just sentence me. It's a waste of time to try and defend myself. That's a problem. Right now we are going for an election. If the election is not done properly, they are going to need to go to court. <laughs> they are going to need to go to court. And Malaba will be waiting for them. <laughs> All of us say that my day has come. I will show you. <laughs> That's a problem. Yes, we, we will not accept that. No, no, I'm telling you, I'm going to ask 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 you, I'm going to An unjust law is no law at all. Was it very past? Yes. An unjust law <laughs> is no law at all. And when injustice becomes the norm, resistance becomes duty to the citizens. The Zimbabwean citizens are duty bound to resist these shenanigans. These irregularities, these poor governance practices, it's our duty to resist because we have a systematic injustice in the country. Now, if we, have, we had the same president, Pastor, he could not be hunting for me to kill me after saying this. He should invite me. We hear you. We may not agree with some of the things that you are saying. But your concerns are noble. What do you think we should do? If he was saying now, he could do that. But when was the last time we had seen leaders in Africa? <laughs> <laughs> I want to pray for you and I want to pray for Zimbabweans who are going through a very tough time. I hope God is going to give us a solution very soon. My heart bleeds for the innocent, poor villagers who are going to hospitals with sick patients and relatives only to be turned down, being told there are no nurses to attend to them. My heart bleeds for every Zimbabwean who is hustling and selling and vending to feed their family only to get their ways confiscated by the council authorities under the guise that they are selling not at designated vending points. My heart bleeds for our teachers who are working day and night to sustain our education system, which the future of the country desperately depends on, but they can't afford a decent meal. Some of them, they are wearing tattered clothes, but they are educated. Professionals who committed to educate the nation they have been turned into thieves. They have been turned into looters. They have been turned into fraudsters. They have been turned into beggars. They have been turned into vendors. My heart bleeds for all of them. Our wish is that God is going to give us a solution in our lifetime. Lift up your hand and I shall pray. Lord God of heaven, the earth and the heavens and the seas, they belong to you. For thy power, for thy glory, for thy pleasure, they exist. We are here because you allowed us to live in this planet to save you. You gave us boundaries that we may stay within our countries and save God responsibly and minister to one another in a community and uphold the principles of godliness by which and through which we are able to attain a peaceful life and a joyful life. We regret, Lord, that we have turned ourselves into animals. 
we rebelled against God's counsel, against the law, the law of God. We devised our own systems. We have turned against us. They are now hating us and we are bleeding. We pray for the continent of Africa. We pray, pray for Zimbabwe. We pray for Zambia, for Botswana, for South Africa, for Malawi, for Mozambique, for DRC, for Ghana, for Nigeria, and all the other countries. We know, Lord, that there are things that are happening spiritually to turn around the case that came upon us because of the events of the yesteryears. Forgive us, Lord, for walking away from the principles of God. Our nations are bleeding. Our nations are sick. Heal us, Lord. We are willing to do corrections. Help us, Lord, and turn our hearts that we may have the heart of a man and not the heart of an animal. We don't care for each other anymore. We are not concerned about the welfare of our brothers. We are yielding axes and spears and harbor jones and noble carries, hunting each other to kill one another for money and for pleasure and for political power. Forgive our corruption, Lord, and grant us grace that we may recover ourselves from this tragedy, from this path of destruction. We are not guided to the right direction. We have gone into a self-destruction mode. We have no capacity to redeem ourselves, to recover ourselves. We need your help. We need your guidance. We need your spirit to touch our hearts. There is no lecture that can change the heart of man. There is no counseling session that can affect the heart of a man. Only God who created the heart knows how to touch the heart, that it can become softer, that it can become a heart of a man and a heart of a child of God. Comfort our people, Lord, and grant them hope in the gospel that they may not despair during this difficult time. We have orphans who don't know where their fathers and mothers are. Some are still hoping that they shall come back home. But you know, Lord, that they were killed so many years ago. You know, Lord, they were murdered in cold blood by their fellow countrymen in the name of politics. May you warm the hearts of these orphans, the hearts of these widows and widowers, and comfort them, Lord, by giving us a different discourse that can secure the lives of the future generations which shall come after us. Give us a heart that listens to God, that is willing to be corrected so that we may build ourselves again. The solutions to our problems are among ourselves, but we need guidance on the execution from you. Bless your children, Lord, and heal those that cannot afford to pay the expensive medical bills at private hospitals because of the shambles state of public institutions. Those that can't afford to pay consultation fees at local village clinics, help them, Lord, heal them, Lord, with your mighty hand because they have no one to rescue them at this particular moment. Take away the self-serving mind, take away the arrogance, take away the selfishness in our people and the corruption in our people, Lord, that we may work hard and put bread on our tables from our sweat and desist from plundering each other and killing each other and getting ill-gotten wealth. You hate people who eat blood money. May you forgive us, Lord, for all the things we have acquired to ourselves through shedding of blood, through the bleeding of your people, through the tears of the poor people in the villages and the townships, the widows and the, and, and the orphans, and the vulnerable members of our society. We repent, Lord, of these evils, and we seek your strength to come back to the kingdom of holiness by which we can live an upright life. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Yes, we are going to need the repentance. And when we pray, we are supposed to pray 
and make a confession of our sins. Because when a person is murdered and you do nothing about it, God views you the same way he views the very person who has murdered him. We are all guilty of all those things. You may think I'm not doing anything wrong. I work for myself. But because you are seeing it happening and you do nothing, you are complicit in the perpetuation of these ills. This is the moment of laughter. Until we meet next time, it's bye for now.